My name is John Allegranti. I'm Professor of Health Education and Chairman of the Department of Health and Behavior Studies at Teachers College at Columbia University, where I'm also on the faculty of the Mailman School of Public Health. I was a Fulbright Senior Specialist in 2005 in Iceland, where I worked with colleagues at uh, Reykjavik University. My work in Iceland involved working with uh, behavioral and social scientists at the Icelandic Center for Social Research and Analysis, where they have been collecting data over the last decade on um, large cohorts of adolescents and children. And because of my interests in looking at the relationship between health behaviors and performance in school, as well as overall health status, this presented um, a unique opportunity to explore some of the questions about whether participation in physical activity or the consumption of healthy diet were in fact related to better school performance among children and adolescents. One of the ideas that we worked on was to essentially look at whether we could demonstrate empirically, that is, whether we could find evidence within the survey data that had been collected over the years uh, within Iceland that in fact children who are healthier may also do better in school. Um, and what we did was to look at questions of whether children who were involved in physical activity on a regular basis, uh, whether children who were uh, eating fruits and vegetables and maintaining a more healthy um, diet as well as uh, weight, uh, in fact were doing better in terms of their grades. And, and we did uh, demonstrate this in a number of uh, investigations now that we've completed and that we've actually published, uh, showing that there is this association between uh, health-related behaviors and, and school performance. And, th and that's an important um, thing, I think, for all advanced economies. Societies with advanced economies have to have both a healthy uh, future workforce as well as a highly educated future workforce. So the two go hand in hand. And I think we're learning more and more about um, the importance of investments in schools and in education, not only from the perspective of producing um, uh, young people and eventually adults who can compete in that economy, but uh, producing young people and adults who can be healthy and can be vibrant and can thrive. One of the roles of a Fulbright senior specialist when they go into another country is to often assist uh, young scholars or scholars uh, in that country in developing capacity to advance their own work, uh, the teaching at their own institution. D um, during the summer of 2005 when I spent a month uh, in Reykjavik at the university, I assisted um, a colleague of mine who made the invitation to join her for that summer um, in developing curriculum um, and in effect launching a new school within the university, the School of Health and Education. And what I think was so unique about our collaboration was that we were able to take ideas that both of us had been thinking about um, on either side of the Atlantic over the last few years about the importance of developing a new breed of professional who could, in effect, look at preparing a new generation of teachers and health promotion specialists who would understand the critical relationship between health status of a society and education. The, the biggest surprise for me um, in going to Iceland uh, perhaps a country that I would not have thought about visiting, let alone spending um, a, a portion of a summer as a Fulbright senior specialist and, and subsequently as a scholar. Um, I went back in 2007 for six months and lived um, in Iceland, in fact served as acting dean of their school of health and education for that period of time. Um, but I think the surprise for me was that not only was I valuable to them in helping them to build capacity with respect to their junior faculty and mentoring a young dean at that time, the surprise was that I learned a lot and I got um, immeasurable benefits 
from living in a different culture, experiencing very different perspectives, um, not only in the work that we were doing and collaborating on, but um, experiencing the different perspectives about Americans uh, in our place in the world. So I, I think that that's really at the heart of the Fulbright experience, the ability to put yourself in the shoes of others, to spend some time in another culture, um, to learn from that culture, and to bring that back. Uh, my own teaching is much, much richer today uh, at my own institution because I'm able to draw on those experiences that I was uh, exposed to uh, in Iceland. And I think that has been an important um, element for my own students uh, with whom I've been able to share the experience. The experience in Iceland has contributed in, in really many ways to my own scholarly development as well as my personal and social development. Um, I've been able to enhance my understanding of the critical questions around the relationship between health behavior and school performance in children and adolescents. Um, I've also been able to better understand um, my, my own uh, interest in the world. And I think that I've been able to bring this back once again to my own teaching. The only thing I would say uh, to those who might be interested in looking at becoming a Fulbright Senior Specialist, and in particular, those thinking about Iceland is that um, Iceland's a unique place in the world. It's perhaps uh, the most unique place that I have now traveled and spent time. Um, from a behavioral and social science perspective, uh, it's a unique population to the extent that you have a, a, a population of about 300,000 Icelanders, um, um, a unique uh, language of their own, uh, a population with very high literacy rate, um, and located in the upper reaches of the North Atlantic between um, Scandinavia and the other Nordic countries and Europe and North America. So what I find so interesting about Iceland is that they're undergoing many of the cultural uh, changes that, that we are experiencing. And they're, they're experiencing this in very unique ways because of their location between both Europe and North America. And despite the arguments that some would, arg would, would put forward about Iceland being not representative because of its small size, um, I would remind people to understand that um, uh, many countries uh, across the globe have populations of less than a million people. So it may not be the exception at all uh, if you look at it with respect to population size. Um, I think if an individual is interested in uh, becoming a senior specialist and spending some time in another country working with a, a group of colleagues, what they should do is uh, I would recommend they try to cultivate uh, a relationship with someone in the country um, because what you have to do basically is you have to dovetail the interests of the specialist with a particular country's needs. And this is precisely how Fulbright uh, attempts to put, to put people together so that um, you, can, you can help them in capacity building. Uh, I would encourage junior scholars um, as they're building their trajectory of work to consider whether there are places in the world where they might go, where they might bring what it is that they know and their expertise uh, to a particular country, but also because going to another country may again present opportunities that might not be possible for them within their own institution, within own, their own state, or within their own country. So I, I think it's very important for young people uh, who are developing their, their research trajectories to look beyond uh, because often there is research taking place in other places that is very closely aligned with the work that we're doing. Thank you.